Welcome to Last First Date Radio, featuring interviews with experts in dating, relating, and mating in midlife. And now, here's your host, Sandy Weiner. This is episode number 439 with Jamie Hirsch, Understanding Your Relationship Blueprint. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Weiner. Welcome back to Last First Date Radio, where we believe a woman of value naturally attracts the rewards and respect she deserves in life and love. I believe in the importance of being a a woman of value so much that I wrote a book about it, and it's called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. And it's filled with 30 tips and exercises to help you step more fully into your value. It's available now on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. And this week's tip, which comes from the book on becoming a woman of value, is to declutter your life. We often work on decluttering our stuff, but what about the rest of our life? What in your life does not bring you joy, as Marie Kondo would say? If you have people in your life who are cluttering up your life, if you have tasks that you do that are driving you crazy and just adding clutter, I encourage you this week to look at what is causing you to be all stuffed up and cluttered and to take at least one baby step towards decluttering, whether it's a friendship that you need to end or something that you're doing for other people that really doesn't bring you joy and doesn't make you happy and drives you crazy. Choose one thing this week and declutter your life. Before I bring our guest on, I wanted to invite you, if you're not already a member, to our Facebook group, Your Last First Date. We are a large group of women who are all working towards positivity and growth. This is not a place where you come and just complain and tell us how horrible dating is and how horrible men are, because that is not acceptable in our group. Where we are different from other groups is that that we are very focused on growth, on self-growth, on moving towards your last first date. So join us at your last first date. And now for my guest, Jamie Hirsch. People are drawn to her for her dynamism. She is has a unique vantage on life and relationships, along with many years of study and mentoring with some of the best people in the business. She has a distinct delivery that has helped hundreds of people transform their lives by sourcing their own power. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you for having me, and thank you for the difference that you're making. I am so excited. Oh, well, thank you. So let's talk about relationships. Uh, Before the show, we talked a little bit about how long we were both doing this work. And I'm just curious, what created that passion for you? You said you've been doing this since you were a child, really. What, What makes you so passionate about relationships? So that's a question that I was always intrigued to hear other people answer, Um, especially when someone knows that they're going to be a doctor at five. They know they're going to be an astronaut at the same age. So at that age, uh, you know, at five years old, I started paying attention to families and people. Uh, What makes a star a star? What, What makes an actress a very great actress? So I wanted to be like those people and I, I wanted to, you know, figure out what makes them great. And that started the whole, uh, you know, um, curiosity in relationships. So with that being said, um, you know, growing up, I, I live in a middle class family and I figured I want the best things. I, you know, so I realized um, there were certain things with my, with my parents, I did not agree with being a rebellious, rebellious, uh, child. So there was a lot of learning and growing in that stage that led me to continuous do research and, uh, hiring the best mentors. Cause I noticed there was a lot of barriers I faced myself when it came to relationships. And with that drive and that really search for meaning in, you know, what makes a person great? How can I show up fully in the world? Um, All these things just kind of led me to further my studies and, you know, allowed me to publish over three books by now. And um, it's just a continuous learning journey. 
That sounds awesome. And, you know, I think a lot of us start out by looking at where, what our home life and how we were modeled relationships and whether they were relationships that we want to continue or that we want to improve upon. So let's talk about self-worth, self-esteem. I know you talk about empowering people to own their worth. Uh, what role does self-esteem play in who we attract into our lives? I, I would say it's very vital. Self-esteem plays a huge role. And not only in, you know, I will answer your question, it's a relationship. If we're in a relationship and we know, wow, that person is bringing out the best in us. They're adding to us. That tells me my self-esteem or something great about it. Can also be a great person I attract, which means because I know I deserve I deserve greatness, just like that other person. If I'm in a relationship where it's more suffering, it's more anxiety, it's more um, force and control, manipulation, then there's a hang up with self-esteem. I realize the link with self-esteem, value and confidence and the people we attract and the career we choose and the money we earn it has a huge, 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 it brings up, you know, how can, it, if there's a gap, if when relationships that are not serving us, like you mentioned, declutter, that's perfect. Decluttering, not just our clothing, our refrigerator, decluttering the people in our lives that are not serving us. Now, how can I take that deeper to say in this year, what I looked at decluttering was the thoughts in my head. The thoughts that said, oh, is, you know, am I good enough? Is, you know, all these things that comes to be little, uh, seeking approval, you know, I need to earn a certain amount of money to make me look like I'm worthy. All of these things that are limiting my belief I need to now see what are those that I need to declutter in order to now start attracting the people in my life based on my real value and what I'm going to be settling for, right? So it, it's, it's a matter of uh, my self-esteem would allow me to know, is this relationship nurturing my well-being or is it taken away from it? And sometimes I've noticed this multiple times that it's easy to just point fingers on the other person. However, there's some relationships I've been in that I point the finger back, the four other fingers that are pointing back at me was saying, wow, I usually act this way and I'm not aware. You know, I, I this, this simple thing that allowed me to get jealous wow, I see that happen in my previous relationship. So even though I'm thinking, wow, I attract someone with similar traits, what about I still have those recurrent thoughts, thoughts in my head that is playing the same behaviors and it's not necessarily the person I'm attracting. So self-esteem plays a huge role and that's yeah. how I view it. Yeah, totally. And uh I like that you bring it back to who we are and how we are being in relationship because that's the only person we can control. So let's talk about relationship blueprint because that's the topic of today's talk. And um, tell us what is the relationship blueprint and how can we improve it to improve who we attract into our lives? And Sandy, this goes back, I know you mentioned with, with parenting um, and it plays a role in the relationship and the spouses we choose. It, it plays a huge role. Our relationship blueprint has a lot to do with the way we were brought up. It's the first role models. So my parents, for example, would be my first role model into the relationships I developed in, in adulthood. So another, another um, uh, I love James Bobley, attachment theory. James Bobley that founded attachment theory is huge and it goes into that. 
how do we show up in relationships? After I start studying attachment theory, and it goes very deep, because sometimes we can drift from one to another if we start relationship with others, especially if we've been with someone for years and they were, let's say, uh, avoidant, we may develop some of those traits, right? We're anxious or even secure, right? Someone that is very secure. You can talk to another person. You can, you know, go and achieve your goal. Very supportive. That's a very uh, secure person. And those are the same things that I can adapt to whether it's avoidant, whether it's anxious. So relationship blueprint, first of all, is finding the root of first understanding the caregivers in our lives. And it can also be teachers and it can also be society. It can also be TV and it can also be movies. What is our beliefs about relationships? Do we believe that men should work and earn a live, you know, pay all the bills? To, you know, treat it like a queen, my door should be open. What is my blueprint? You know, so there's a lot of things that goes into relationship blueprint. However, first of all, we need to discover what is our personal beliefs about relationships. And further back, how did our parents or caregivers, how were their relationships? And going back, how were their parents' relationships? Because relationships are historical. It's not just relying on my parents, it's their parents. You know, another thing that makes me look, what are the women in my life, my aunts and my grandparents, you know, how are their relationships? How is it modeled? Is it a lot of divorce, a lot of single, a lot of happy marriages? What is it? Look, what does it look like? Um, so by discovering that, I get closer to the root. Then there's a few steps we want to take. Now let's find out what is our attachment theory? How do we usually show up in relationships by identifying an attachment theory? It allows us now to know that this it's okay. If someone's anxious, it's okay, right? And, and that's what I realized about myself, anxious. Right, my, my parents would leave and then you know, at a young age, I would start crying. When are they coming back? So there was a safety issue there. Who do I trust, right? Trust was a big thing for me. And by identifying my attachment theory, it allows me to know what areas I get to work on. And those areas are just what thoughts that needs to be rewired or gets to be rewired. So what am I telling myself that makes me anxious? First, I get to identify and just keep recreating that until it's rewired where it's normal now to be okay another is love language what is my love language i mean these are all vital things so i know if i get into a relationship and someone is feel claustrophobic my love language is affection touch if i know in a previous relationship well without knowing all of these things i was with a guy that felt claustrophobic in an elevator or when he's too close and I love being cuddled. So that was a huge hang up for me. Yeah, there's compromise. Am I gonna compromise, you know, one of my value or my needs? Because, so I realized how important that was for me. And so knowing what my love language is would allow me now to make sure, you know, when I choose a mate, we discuss these things and I know for a fact. Would this work? Would this not work? What is my attachment theory? Now, if this shows up where it's allowing me to be anxious, now I need to say, hey, Jamie, you're thinking about something that does not serve you. That's the old way of being. What is the new way of being? And it's okay. And I accept it and I forgive myself. So relationship blueprint is first, you know, identifying the beliefs identifying the beliefs, that's the root causes. And then now we're looking into um, what is our attachment theory? So we know how to work with that. And then um, our love language. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where we get to identify that closer and closer. And of course there's many more, but those are the, you know, the starting points I like to say where we can start at and then figure it out. Yeah.
Yeah, it's important to know all of these things about ourselves so that we can understand how we are in relationship. You know, um, most of us are just completely in the dark when it comes to why we do what we do or how we how our thoughts are controlling what we do. And so really understanding all this is, is so crucial to being, being able to attract in healthier relationships, right? So tell us like if you, you've done all this work, you've identified what's your love language, what's your attachment style, how do you then catch yourself and catch those thoughts, catch the ways that you're sabotaging yourself? I'll give you a great example. And this example is, and it just comes with awareness, really and truly awareness. Now, what is awareness? Awareness is just identifying. So for example, um, really searching back into my relationships and noticing relationships, how it started, how it ended. And just being that observer that just really observing and being aware. So now in a new relationship, when something is playing off, the same way, I can now tell myself, huh, is that the old way of being or is this the new way of being? Like for example, anxiousness that shows up, am I safe, am I not safe? Trust, do I trust this person, right? And it takes a while. So is, is this the old way of being or the new way of being? And it takes awareness, Sandy, it's so vital. If I am not measuring my life. How can I be able to move forward? Especially in relationships. If I go back and see and be observant, how did it start? How did it end it? What happened? What transpired? I can now start seeing a link and know where I get to take responsibility for my life because I get to create it. So if I notice trust that I want to be um, like a security on this person, guess what? I get to realize, oh, oh, I don't need security right now because that's just my old way of being. And uh, that's not necessarily true. I don't need to monitor. I don't need to, you know, I, I can allow myself to trust because that's a new way of being. And it's just that continuous reminder and at first, that only allows me to know that by taking responsibility of my past relationships and taking responsibility of who I, what I want to create in this new relationship. So I would say awareness is huge. And, you know, there's this thing about getting a bead and you can always like, you know, those things that you pull and, you know, it just like if a thought comes in my head, oh, um, maybe I should question this. Like, you know, when anxious, they question a lot. There's a whole analyzing. And it then builds a whole story in the head that's not even true. So I get to tell myself, wait a minute, stop. That's not what's going on. That's an illusion. I can use the band and pull it and get myself, well, be in the present moment. That's not even true. So it's just really awareness. Continuous. Yeah. Awareness is so key. It's always the first step in change, right? And so um, I love the idea of reminding yourself by, you know, tapping, you could have a rubber band or a bead or something around your wrist to remind yourself, this is an old thought. This is not really you at your best. Um, so let's say you're now, you're aware, you're taking responsibility, you have all this new awareness. How do you really know if somebody is the right fit for you? Someone the right fit for me is what I want what I need, what matches my value, right? We can have totally two different. That goes back to uh, what's my love language is number one, right? So how do I know someone's the right fit for me? Do they add to me? Do I add to them? Because it's also give and receive. Do I feel safe? Safe is number one. Can I trust this person? So, Everyone has different wants and needs and values. So that's going to apply once we know what that is for us, that's going to apply differently to everyone. A way I know that is someone that adds to me. I feel more love. 
I, I more love than chaos. There's more harmony. There's more agreements. There's commitments. There's being responsibility. There's you know um, a factor of weeness, not an individually iness. Um, someone that includes me, make me feel valued. And the same I do for them. We always got to remember, if I'm expecting this from someone, I got to give it to. And they may have a different need, however, find out what that is. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I would say it, 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 it's on each and every one individual basis of what their specifics are. Yeah. Yeah, I love the, the check-in. Is this person adding to my life? Am I adding to their life? And really, again, the word responsibility just keeps coming through. It's, uh, you know, taking that responsibility that this is a team. It's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's about us and whether we're both feeling nurtured in this relationship. And so it's, it's really a feeling, you know, I think for a lot of people, they have this checklist and he has to have you know, be six feet tall and have this color hair and this, you know, it's just all things that, that aren't really important. I mean, I'm kind of joking, but it's not a joke. I mean, people have these laundry lists of, of qualities that are not really going to tell you if you're a good match. It's really in how you're going to feel with that person and whether you both add to each other's lives and you create this third entity, which is the, the relationship. Yeah. As we come to a close, I would love to hear your final words of advice for anyone who wants to go on their last first date. And thank you, Sandy, for what you're doing and bringing people aware, right? I think it takes someone so passionate and loving what they're doing that they get to share that value information that, hey, listen, you're taking your time you're, you know, investing in this topic so that you can take that information and help others who, like a doctor you mentioned, doesn't have an interest about studying relationships or uh, 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 a mechanic, right, or a pilot. So it's, first of all, thank you for bringing that awareness for the people who want love in their life. As I believe life is too short to have a mediocre relationship. And another thing where you ask is, what is my last word of advice? I think, you know, for me, life is a journey and it's something we get to play and we get to design our life. A relationship is not the last stop. We were born singly and even if you're a twin, sometimes there's conjoined stories. However, you're not necessarily gonna die at the same time, right? So there's one that's gonna die, right? And there's one that's gonna be born and separate. The same thing with relationships. It's a journey. Some people are in our lives for a reason, some for a season, and some for a lifetime. Sometimes that is exactly what nails it. Uh, a reason, maybe there's some learning experience that transpired between the two and it lasts very short. A season, uh, same thing. A learning experience, whatever it is, karma, karma, whatever related uh, for maybe a longer session in time. And a lifetime is usually like the real long best friends, uh, the marriages, um, those are together that, you know, not necessarily married, right? So I like to see relationships in those stages so that if it ends, figure out, was it a reason, a season or a lifetime? So it's a little more, you know, reassuring and it's not too much attachment to the pain and suffering. So that's, yeah. that's exactly what I can leave with. And knowing that there are lots of people in the world and we're going to die alone, just like we were born individually. And mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah, it's all okay. <laughs> A lot of compassion in that statement. Um, so Jamie, thank you for what you do in the world and tell our audience how they can reach you. Yes, if you go to jamiehirsch.com, that's J-A-M-I-E, Hirsch, H-I-R-S-C-H, you will be able to connect with me and I will be happy to see how I can help you. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for the work you do in the world. And um, thank you everyone for listening today. And if you love our show, please rate and review us. And we hope you go on your last first date very soon.